standard. <laughs> Figures show that the average handling times from Upton Station to life risk incidents in the West Kirby Station area in 2015-16 was nine minutes. This does not include core handling times. Relocating the station to the Silver Massey site would reduce this response time by two minutes, allowing for swifter response times. <coughs> Whilst the relocation would result in an increase in response times to the Upton area of between 30 seconds and a minute, it is considered that the greater reduction of two minutes to the West Kirby area is a considerable factor that should weigh in support of the proposal. Whilst two minutes may not sound much, in reality, when responding to an emergency, this improved response time is highly significant and would increase survivability rates. Figures for the past five years <coughs> show that the number of fatalities in the West Kirby Station area has been higher than the Upton area, and this can partly be attributed to the age demographics of the area with a high number of people over the age of 75, which is a group more likely to be vulnerable for serious injury or fatality in a fire. There is no policy requirement for a sequential assessment for alternative sites to be undertaken for developments within the Greenbelt. Therefore, the merits of this application must be considered and the potential for alternative sites should not be used to advance arguments against this site, as this site is the one that is up for consideration. Notwithstanding this, however, the applicants have set out a number of alternatives <coughs> that, that, that they have explored. This application site is considered by the applicant to be their optimum with regards to improving response times and minimising impact on the openness of the green belt. Concerns have been voiced about the use of Heron Road by fire appliances, appliances responding to incidents in the Bells and Hoylink area. The fire service have confirmed that Heron Road is unlikely to be their first option if responding from the sort of nasty site. Mapping software has confirmed that alternative routes by Salt Massey Road and Hoylake Road would be quicker than taking Heron Road. There are a number of options available in terms of routes for, regarding, for responding to emergencies and it is considered that the proposed would have minimal impact on existing traffic conditions and would, re would generate low levels of vehicle movements on adjacent highway network. In conclusion then, the benefits of improved emergency coverage and quicker response times for the whole combined coverage area can, be <coughs> can on balance be considered to constitute very special circumstances that outweigh any harm to the green belt. The changes made to the elevational treatment of the proposed building, together with the repositioning of various elements of the proposal in terms of the overall site layout, are considered to be an improvement on the earlier refused proposal that would lessen the potential for harm to the remedy for nearby residents. On balance, therefore, it is considered that the revised proposal is, is acceptable and is recommended for approval. There is a qualifying petition of objection and a qualifying petition of support in connection with this application. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I've noticed a number of people have actually just um, recently walked into um, the room. Um, so I'm just going to reiterate that we will not be discussing this evening items 4, Strap 4, 5, 6 Acres, 6 Hoyland Police Station, 7 Long Lane, and 11 Grove the Court. If you have come to that application, then we will be discussing it this evening. If you want to leave now, then feel free to do so. Okay, uh, as Matthew said, we do have a qualified petition for this application. Would the, the, the lead petitioner or representative of the petition like to come forward? Sorry, but this is the, can it have the objectors first, please? Sorry. My, my apologies. Thank you. If I could just ask you to state your name and address and then uh, you have to my to speak. My name is Les Spencer and I'm the chairman of the Sober Massive Village Conservation Society and a resident of Sober Massive Village. 
The land in question is protected green belt, and as such, it can't be built on by the fire authority or anyone else unless they can prove that very special circumstances exist. Those circumstances must be proved beyond doubt before national green belt policy protection principles can be set aside. The fire authority first applied for a pre-planning opinion for this site in 2015, and were told in the, in the then opinion of the planning officer it was likely to be refused. The fire authority had admitted that the redevelopment of the existing Hunter Fire Station was an acceptable alternative. Therefore, the planning officer advised that as there was a non-green belt alternative... Excuse, excuse me one second, there's a number of people can't hear you. Can you just pull your microphone a little bit closer to you? The Fire Authority first applied for a pre-planning opinion for this site in 2015 and were told that in the opinion of the then planning officer it was likely to be refused. The Fire Authority had admitted that the redevelopment of the existing Upton Fire Station was an acceptable alternative. Therefore, the planning officer advised that as there was a non-green belt alternative, she saw no special circumstances for a green belt. Greenbelt development in Sorgo Massey. Nothing materially has changed since that opinion, except that the Fire Authority has now conjured up a special circumstances argument based upon response times from Upton to the West Kirby area. This is the only way they can circumvent Greenbelt policy protection and avoid planning refusal. Without a convincing special circumstances argument, this application is dead in the water and should face refusal. It falls upon this committee to weigh the special circumstances argument submitted by the Fire Authority as it is a pivotal matter. Is the argument a valid one or is it more a presentational strategy to gain approval? We contend the latter. Let us not forget that the Fire Authority risk assessed and approved the transfer of all combined Upton and West Kirby emergency responses to the, to the current Upton Fire Station some three years ago. They advised their own board of management that emergency response times would remain within acceptable tolerances to West Kirby, Morlake and Mells from Upton. Yet they now claim it's essential they relocate nearer to West Kirby. This application would have more credence had not the fire authority already proven that during the last three years that they can safely provide emergency cover from Upton for the combined station areas of Upton and West Kirby. It's not an abstract question whether Upton can cope, it's a proven fact it can. We've heard nothing about how well the Upton station has performed in covering the combined station areas. To do so would presumably discredit the reasons for this application. The Chief Fire Officer repeatedly claims there's no plan B, no alternative to relocating to Sorbo Massey, and in reality there are several alternative sites they haven't fully explored, including the most obvious one, the full redevelopment of Upton. Sorbo Massey is just the easy option, being virgin land on the main highway and on by World Council. Fire Authority minutes actually concede that should, and I quote, high levels of public opposition cause an application for a new fire station to be refused, then Upton will remain the main fire station of the combined station area. Just how much opposition does the Fire Authority need? Between Greasby and Sorbo Massey, over 7,500 objections have been lodged, preferring refurbishment of the Upton fire station. Given that around 75% of all emergency callouts are in the old Upton station area, why move the main fire station 1.2 miles away from those emergencies? And that includes away from our park hospital. The fire authority admit that there will be no improvement in average response times from Sorbo Massey in comparison to what Upton is currently achieving. They also admit that most response calls will actually take longer from Sorbo Massey. So is this, this application really nece necessary? Are the special circumstances really not special after all? This application remains a gross intrusion upon the lives of elderly residents who live as close as 30 metres from the boundary. They will lose their rural views and tranquility. They will lose well-used green belt amenity space and natural habitat. They will have to endure the burning of chemicals, diesel, petrol, tyres and vehicles for training purposes. This is an unnecessary assault upon the green belt. It also is completely contra contrary to the founding principles that this council imposed when it created the Solomonsi Conservation Society, whose boundary sits only yards away. We contend that the Fire Authority has proved the potential viability of Upton as the urban alternative. They should temporarily move back to West Kirby whilst refurbishing Upton. The special circumstances case is a weak one and insufficient to justify desecrating the Sorbo Massey Green Belt. Mr. Spencer, you have just 30 seconds left. This application is flawed and should be refused in its entirety.
favour of this application, would the petitioner like to come forward? Yes, they can. Um, can I just uh, ask you again to state your name and address and you have up to five minutes to speak. If you can pull the microphone and just close your mouth as possible, everyone should be able to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. My name is Kevin McKee. I live at Eleanor Road in Bourne. Now, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of all the people who have signed a petition, but much more importantly, for 26,000 residents of West Kirby and Boy Lake who will continue to receive unacceptably long emergency response times if the application is refused. A vocal minority of people oppose this application. Outside of the vocal minority, the application has very strong support and this is evident on the social media. I want to place on record our, our disappointment that we've been denied the opportunity to show a short film that very graphically demonstrates why response times are so important. The shameful manipulation of process is undemocratic and completely unacceptable. The recent tragedy a Grenfell Tower brought home to the nation the devastating effects of the fire. The same is also true of all the other incidents attended by the fire and rescue teams. It is obvious to everyone that response times can make the difference between life and death. We call on the planning committee to approve this application.